What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Chael Sonnen's dream fight for Colby Covington, Michael Chandler on Islam Makachev's title chances, Cejudo and Jake Paul against Conor McGregor, and much more. Jake Paul is not impressed by Conor McGregor, says he could knock him out. Jake Paul has built himself quite a reputation within the combat sports world, taking on fights with increasingly tougher opponents despite still being relatively green to boxing. He's also got a ton of promotion behind him and is a big name in the YouTube-verse and pop culture overall. He's already making an insane amount of money relative to his experience level compared to other professional boxers, and he's also not shy about talking smack to other pro fighters, especially those in the mixed martial arts world, as they're the ones who always respond. and generally have bigger followings than most boxers by and large. Enter Conor McGregor. The Irishman is not only a former UFC champion in both the featherweight and lightweight divisions, but he's also still the biggest draw in the sport and has fought legendary boxer himself, Floyd Mayweather, in the past, going the distance against Money Mayweather in a highly anticipated fight. Even still, Jake Paul is letting it be known he's not that impressed with the notorious one. Case in point, he recently retweeted a video of McGregor doing some boxing training with a caption that read, I would KO Connor in boxing or MMA, right hand of God. Obviously, Jake Paul is going for the reaction, baiting not just MMA fans to weigh in, but also McGregor himself, who is still nursing a broken leg injury and had made use of his Twitter fingers over the past few months. While McGregor has yet to respond to the slander, it remains to be seen what happens from here. McGregor had stated that he still wants to fight boxing again, and early last year, he was even in talks to fight Manny Pacquiao, which fell through. Paul, meanwhile, is said to want to fight in 10 professional boxing bouts before moving over to MMA. While a fight between Paul and McGregor is unlikely to happen anytime soon, crazier things have happened. So we pass the question on to you. Do you believe that one day we could see McGregor fight Jake Paul? And do you think it would be in MMA or in boxing? And who do you think would win that fight? I guess. <laughs> Michael Chandler says Islam Makachev needs more to do to get a title shot. In the short time that Michael Chandler has been in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, he's been able to fight some of the top guys in the lightweight division, and for good reason. He's a former three-time Bellator lightweight champion, and long been considered a top lightweight in the world. So that's why he was thrown another top contender in Dan Hooker in his very first UFC fight, and later challenged Charles Oliveira for the title and fought Justin Gagey, the current number one contender, in the 2021 fight of the year. So Chandler knows a thing or two about the top lightweights in the world. In talking about Makachev, Chandler gives credit where credit is due. He believes that Islam's 10 fight win streak is very impressive, and he's proven no doubt to be one of the top top fighters in the lightweight division, especially with his win over Dan Hooker. But Chandler also believes that there's a case for Islam to at least fight one more bout before he can fully claim to be the number one contender for the lightweight title. Case in point, this is what Chandler stated in a recent interview with the Schmo this week. Uh, however, beating Bobby Green does, shouldn't get you a title shot. Um, all His win streak is consistent. It consisted of everybody outside of the top 10 aside from Dan Hooker. Um, so I do think him and Benil Darius need to fight. I think it's a great matchup. I think their, their strong suits complement each other very well. They're both grapplers. Islam had already been scheduled to fight Dariush in a highly anticipated title shot eliminator just a few weeks ago in their fight night headliner, but a serious leg injury forced Dariush to withdraw from the card with just 10 days to go, and in stepped Bobby Green, a longtime UFC veteran who hasn't really been in the top 15 for years. But he did have a nice unanimous decision win over Nasra Hakparas just a few weeks prior. Islam made short work of Green, winning by TKO ground and pound in the very first round. But now, with doctors saying Dariush can come back from the injury without surgery, it looks like the UFC will actually have Islam compete against Dariush later this year for the number one contender spot. But what do you think about Chandler's comments here about Islam? Do you agree that Islam hasn't done enough and should fight one more fight at least to get to a title? Colby Covington should fight Israel Adesanya next, says Chael Sonnen. With the way Israel Adesanya has been putting away opponents, looking dominant as a middleweight champion, Uncle Chael believes that his next opponent could be a great foil for him, Colby Covington. Chaos is fresh off his unanimous decision win over his former best friend, Jorge Masvidal, and has looked incredible in all of his fights. He's also challenged and failed against welterweight champion Kamaru Usman, losing by TKO in their first fight and by unanimous decision in their rematch. Even UFC president Dana White stated that if Kamaru Usman didn't exist, Colby would be the 170-pound champion. 
With Kobe and Adesanya's mic skills, this fight could be a promotion's dream with all the hype and momentum that this could muster. The fact that both are incredible fighters, a wrestler versus a striker, is just icing on the cake. This is what Sonnen told Helen Yee in a recent interview about this. I want to see Colby Coven fight, fight in Izzy Adesanya, and quite frankly, Izzy Adesanya needs somebody that's going to meet him halfway. I think that Adesanya is also a master. I think he's a master entertainer on the way to the ring, what he does, uh, and before he leaves the microphone behind. He needs somebody that can match him. Robert Whitaker left him hanging, didn't want to meet him halfway. Cannoneer's not going to meet him halfway. Those two need each other right now. They could form a partnership. And they can go do some business. At the moment, Adesanya is set to take on Jared Cannonier sometime later this year, while it's unclear what's next for Covington. But what do you think about Chael's suggestion of Kobe moving up to fight Adesanya? Would you want to see this fight? And who do you think would win that fight? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest fight news. Henry Cejudo says he would stop Conor McGregor in a lightweight fight. A mini feud erupted online when Conor McGregor posted a video of him hitting pads with boxing gloves recently. Social media can be unforgiving, and in this case, Henry Cejudo gives zero Fs, going in and criticizing McGregor striking as he mounts a comeback to the octagon. It all began when Cejudo responded to the training footage with this tweet. Your hands are down and your distance is off. Stay away from them, yes men. Just a tip from the GOAT. Then he stated, The same reason you let people chew that front leg, McGregor, is the same reason why I would stop you. What do you say I make my comeback at 155? To which McGregor responded by saying this, Shut up, you little fart. Then Cejudo responded with this, I don't mind being a fart. Farts have gas. You always run out. McGregor had previously called Cejudo a little fart also. This is really just a continuation of their harsh words from previous social media interactions. Still, it's interesting to see both snap back at each other even though this is highly unlikely to take place. But what do you make of this exchange between Cejudo and Connor? Tai Tuivasa is fully behind Cain Velasquez. The horrible saga involving Cain Velasquez continues as he was recently denied bail by California judge Shalina Brown, claiming he is too high a risk. Cain was recently arrested for attempted murder and other weapons charges after he allegedly followed a vehicle carrying Harry Goularte, who was charged with sexually assaulting his child relative as many as 100 times, rumored to be his four-year-old daughter at a daycare facility she had been attending. Goularte was arrested, charged, but later was granted supervised release. Kane then allegedly chased and shot at a moving vehicle carrying Goularte and others. Ultimately, the driver of the vehicle, Goularte's stepfather, was shot and he's now recovering from non-life-threatening injuries. Kane was later arrested and charged for the incident. Since then, the entire MMA world has come out in full support of Kane, saying that they would all do the exact same thing in that position. One of those guys is current heavyweight contender Tai Tuivasa, who had this to say about the situation while on the MMA hour this week. Oh, he's such a he's such a great guy in real life. Like he's always in the gym, he's always helping the younger guys, always helping the amateurs and stuff. And uh, you know, things take over and wish he got the guy in the head. <laughs> yeah. Kane is facing 20 years to life in prison if he's found guilty of all the charges. What do you think about Tuivasa's statement concerning Kane? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts on what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this. See you next time.